Brought to you by Whirlpool. Bet with the world. Uh, welcome back. Time to introduce my latest uh, guest and what a start to the season it has been for South Africa. New market based trainer Dylan Cunha, who joins us now. Great to have you on the sofa. You must be loving life right now. Yeah, it's going really well. Thank you for having me today. What a start to the season. Beyond your wildest expectations? Yes. Um, I couldn't have dreamed to start off like that this year. Um, one of our goals this year was to have a good two year old winner and then to win the first two-year-old race, the Brocklesby is basically ticked that off the box straight away. So really happy. Yeah. And it, for us, it, it's a kind of statement of intent. For you and your team, I suppose, it's the kind of platform and it, it's the carrot that dangles to give you an idea of wh where you're going, what you might be able to achieve. Yes, well, basically, um, our business plan when we started was to be a bit different to everyone else. and. Um, it's not about the number of winners, it's about the quality horses we get. And um, we wanted a higher quality, focus more on prize money and more on bigger days and bigger races. So to start the season winning the Brocklesby on a big day is basically, like you said, a statement of intent and what we're all about. Um, I would give up, if we had 30 winners this year, I'd give up 15 to have bigger days like that. Yeah. That's, um, that's where our focus is. Yeah. And so, I mean, really, it's your second full season over here, isn't it? In, in terms of that system and everything starting to work how you, you kind of hope and want it to do, wh when did it start to, to fall into place? Well, um, look, basically straight away, it is only our first se uh, second season going into it, really. But we started off um, with three horses who have won seven or eight races between them, including a £100,000 race at York. So straight away buying the right horses i was just telling you before the show um my dad louis uh, really good at uh, picking horses and straight away we got off with two yearlings and um one's an epsom winner one's a york winner um and that sort of set the statement of intent from the beginning um it just when you've only got two to start with it just yeah. takes a bit longer to get noticed so to speak and that 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 silver sword success last season at York. For, for, for us, it felt like um, it, it felt like a pivotal moment. Was, was that how it felt at the time for you and the team? Yeah, for me, um, it was the breakthrough point for us in England. Um, um, he's, we were still we only had seven or eight horses at this stage, and we have 50 now because of him. He's the horse who's... Um, he, I was telling one of my owners the other day, she was visiting and I was showing her around and I showed her Silver Sword and I said, everything you see now is because of him. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it, is it yeah. literally, the, you know, a the TV race or big meeting race, is it, is it the sort of thing that literally the next week the phone rings or do you, do you still have to push the buttons? Um, yeah, that's a funny subject. I, it's one of the weirdest things, um, the phone never rings. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's the strangest thing. I've literally... I think maybe out of the 50 horses being sent, two or three, the rest I've had to really work and grovel for. So you um, yeah, go, go and buy yourself and then find owners for? or Yeah, put yourself under pressure, to, um, speculate, and then just work really hard on selling them. Um, I've got a good member of the team, Jordan Hopkins, who's he's a young bloodstock agent upcoming, and he's really good. He works with me really closely, and between us, we managed to get the horses sold. But, um, yeah, the phone doesn't ring. That's one, it's one of the strange things. You've got to sell, sell, sell. Yeah. Ha, ha, m mentally, that kind of, that kind of pressure, what, what is that like? Um, look, as William Haggis would say, pressure's for tyres. Um, I don't feel the pressure, so to speak, but it does, it does get you down. Um, you're working hard, you win a race at York like that with hardly any horses. You don't get sent anymore. You go to the sales with no buyers and you just have to literally beg people to buy them and then um like last weekend we won the Brocklesby not what we actually lost two owners who never backed it rather than gained any horses um so it's that kind of thing it's 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 really hard you you have to look I started here with not knowing anyone um bought three horses I own myself with my father and we've built up to 50 ourselves everyone in our yard basically 90% of our yard are new owners to racing. We've brought in English people that weren't in the game. So we've done something right and we've, we work really hard at it. That is fantastic. And the beauty of that is that 
A, you, you've got a chance to identify yourself apart from the, the pack, but you also have got the opportunity to create something completely different. You know, racing's all about traditions and maybe sometimes stuck in its ways, but you've got a chance to do something completely new off, off, off bat. Yeah, we've, um, it's just exactly what you said. We've basically tried to be completely different in the way we target races, the way we, um, we do things as our social media is run. Instead of paying a social media company to do it, we run it, I run it all myself because mm. um, it needs to be, I just want to be authentic and different and be who we are basically. So it has worked um, to have 50 horses, 90% syndicated at 2.5% shares is, um, it has to be working. So, so syndicates, you feel, is the way forward for you or it's just the way that's working out for you at this moment in time? Um, look, I think all the syndicates are pretty much um, fighting the same pool of owners. We've managed to get a lot of uh, new blood into the game. Mm. Um, I enjoy training for syndicates. I enjoy the people. I enjoy explaining to them. I enjoy them coming to visit. Um, yesterday, I couldn't even get out of my car park. It was so full with people on a Saturday morning, but I enjoy that. Yeah. Whether it's the way forward or not, um, I'm not sure. Um, from my side, um, it's definitely what's given me the opportunity to grow and train horses here. Um, I still think we're missing a lot. There's still a lot more we could do to, to grow the syndicates, but um, yeah, it's been good to me. And if you were to describe to, to me as a racing fan or to, to our viewers are racing fans about the the type of people that you now have in those syndicates with demographics and background how do, what sort of people are they we've oh, literally got every demographic and type of person from any type of background we have i mean the first horse we bought and syndicated was a horse called ferret de san juan and from that we've got some owners who bought two and a half percent who now own three or four horses outright um, with me and then we've got some lads who've just bought lads or lasses bought into some other horses we've got people for, from who drive taxis to people who are retired with lots of money that just mm. want an interest um, there's a whole complete demographic of people it's really um, it's really a widespread variety of the type of people which is interesting do you now feel in control of your own your own destiny to an extent um, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, I think we, I'm pretty confident we're on the right path. We're on the, the, we're on the path we, we, from day one, we aimed at where we are sort of going. Yeah. And look, it's, it's going according to plan. It's been harder than I thought, I won't lie. It's been tough. Um, I've had to work really hard. I've got a good team behind me who works really hard. But it's definitely going where we want. It's definitely in the direction we, when we went, before we started, when we said this is what we're going to do, we definitely headed in that direction. Because your life hasn't been a straight line, has <laughs> it, in any regard? From a young, you know, Group One winning trainer in South Africa, and you're in your twenties, you had a, you know, four, five, six years ago, you had a different career path in, entirely. Just to talk us through that life change. Yeah, it, I think it basically sums up the kind of person I am. Um, when I do something, I do, do it properly. Um, so when I trained in South Africa the first time, I was young, but I did it properly, won a grade one. Um, we did really well, to be fair, with a smallish yard. We were, at the time, we were taking on the US to Empire, which eventually came to an end. It was really difficult for me. Um, and, I, and then I was flying, I became an airline pilot, went all the way to the airline, again showing that's just, if I do something, I do it properly. Yeah, commit. And that, like the ultra marathons, people always ask me about that. Um, same as that. Put 100% into it. I think I ran seven or eight ultra marathons and finished every single one I started. It's just mentally very strong. And then starting training here in England was just, it, it was nothing like I imagined. It's been so much harder than I thought it would be. But I mean, we've put in 200% and it's, it's really paying off now. So. And is that because of the competitiveness of it? Just getting that rung up the ladder? What, what is it that's made it so hard? Yeah, I, well, first of all, no one knew me. Um, no, no, no one from the BHA knew me. I had to, it was really hard just to get the license and get everything cleared from South Africa and got to do the modules again. And then absolutely no one knew me. I had no staff. I had to muck out the horses, ride them out myself to start with. Um, and then people started to, the people pop in and out and then 
getting my first owner was really difficult, but that came through a cat, inevitably, of all things. Um, and, and then it just grew from there. It's been, look, not knowing anyone's probably been the hardest thing because um, you can't be telling everyone you're a grade one winning trainer from South Africa and you haven't done it here. Everyone wants to see you do it here first. So thankfully, um, the horses have run well and people are starting to notice and we're growing every day. Yeah, and you, you only need to look at, you know, you look at guys like David O'Mara, Richard Fahey, you know, the, um, the, Keith Douglas when he was training. The, the, a lot of those guys started off maybe with sellers and claimers, horses from other people's yard, with a half a dozen, then on to ten, and before you know it, it Saturday horses. You, yeah. you, you can kind of visualise that in a way. 100%. You have, to, you have to prove yourself. I mean, it's only fair on everyone else for you to prove yourself. Um, John Gosden was the same. He, he started training, then went to America, then came back, and, I mean, he, he's one of the best trainers in the world now. Um, yeah, we've, I think we've done really well with those first three horses we bought to get the license have all won two or three races or more and bigger races. The next year, um, we've got a classic entry with our next bunch of two-year-olds and then um, the next year, which is this year, our first two-year-olds won the Brocklesby. So um, I think we're proving we can do the job. We're running at a 17 or 18% strike rate. Um, the horses in training we've bought that you we were just talking about, um, Quest Thoroughbreds, who's a syndicate started by Jordan and my brother-in-law John in the yard um, to help the stable grow. Basically, finished in the top ten in the all-weather championships, now seventh. Mm. It was like Godolphin and all those names in that top ten. So starting from nothing, I think we've proved that we can do the job if we get the... It's unbelievable transformation, yeah. isn't it, in the last in, in the last year? And what's the percentage of saying now you've got two-year-olds coming through um, as a percentage of your yard? Yeah, that's one of the worrying things for me now that I'm getting known and the pressure, um, well, or the pressure of people wanting to see you have regular winners is we're 50-50, so 50% two-year-olds, 50% horses in training, which is. I think is a positive for our game plan mm. um, because the two year olds are where you get the good horses and that's what I want. But for everyone else who wants to see you regularly winning, 25 horses that eight of them have run all winter is not exactly the number you want. Yeah, you need a bit more, but we'll, we ma we're managing, I've got a good race planning team, a guy called Bob Stevens, who's um, really sharp, uh, Jordan Hopkins. And between us, we're managing to get the horses in the right races and squeeze the lemon dry, so to speak. So, okay. So you've got a Brocklesby winner in some miniature. What's the what's the the kind of battle plan with that horse? So he will run at Ascot on Trials Day in the five furlong race, a three pound penalty, um, and then he'll either go to the Norfolk or Windsor Castle at Royal Ascot. That's the plan, anyway. Um, there's a race at Sandown which he, we could look at, um, but I preferably like to not run him too much because he I know he's small and the Brocklesby history doesn't really show well for two-year-olds but I think he's I think he's decent he's mm. um I think uh, he's small but he's I think he's better than a little small early two-year-old winner and pedigree wise he's not necessarily just a five furlong two-year-old no, is he no he's not he's bred to go a mile and a quarter yeah he's really quick he's the quickest horse I've ever trained yeah He's in, really quick and in, he's tough. Interesting, interesting. Um, and El Buffalo was the, the three-year-old you were talking about yeah. with a classic from, a, from Wolverhampton in, in December to, to potentially Newmarket in, in May. How, yeah. How's he been since the last time we saw him on track? Yeah, he's, he's a lovely horse. He is, um, he's a horse that was ready to run in July last year and had a little injury. We took time with him, brought him out in December just to get the, the winner out the way and a two-year-old win for a colt is important. He's by Havana Gray, mm. which is, I mean, he's worth a lot of money, I think, going forward. Um, he won really easily. Uh, he had a great winter. He looks fantastic. Um, he galloped with Silver Sword yesterday over a mile and a quarter on the, on the grass. It was really impressive. Um, whether or not we actually go for the guineas is still... In the air, it's 50-50 at this stage. What, what will be the deciding factors? What, what are the discussions? It'll, it'll be a trial. Um, I'm convinced he stays a mile, and mm. the rest of the team are not. So <laughs> it's sort of, we look, I'm always open to everyone's opinion. Um, I think that's why we do quite well as a yard. We have lots of discussions. Um, 
Reese Clutterback, who's our stable jockey, said to me yesterday, he's, he's still umming and ahhing if a mile's his distance, he, but he hasn't committed yet, so I'm going to push it as far as we can. Um, he'll have a trial on... He, he'll either go for the green him, which will put him, in his, him and me in my place, probably, <laughs> um, or he'll go... F if it's wet ground, he, he, doesn't, he wants fast ground, he'll go for a novice at Kempton on um, the 17th, three days before the Greenham, or there's a, a conditions race at Newmarket on the same day. So we have options in case it stays wet. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I have the feeling he'll get a mile and I'm hoping he does. And look, it's possibly the worst year to have a Guineas runner with City of Troy. <laughs> yes. It's probably the best horse since Frank. He's frightening, but, isn't he? But do you yeah. know what, yeah. if, if Cheltenham the other week taught us anything, is that you you should never be as afraid of one horse. You know, El Fabiolo yeah, doesn't jump well and suddenly the champion chase is up for grabs. Exactly. It's racing at the end of the day. Um, it's competitive. I don't mind competing. I mean, I'd be over the moon if we ran sixth, for example, yeah. or if we just got in, really. But um, I'm not going to be stupid about it. If, if the whole team and we feel he's not going to stay a mile and he doesn't trial properly, we'll just go back and start again and because he is a nice horse and um, he is a cult like I say by Vanagre he's going to be worth money for the owners so we'll do the best for the horse yeah and Reese Clutterbuck you mentioned there is part of your team he's yeah. I mean that's a good signing isn't it I would say it's probably the best horse I've bought since I've been in England <laughs> where, honestly it's been unbelievable we put a lot of homework into him the team I was just talking about him myself and we gave him a ride just to see what he was like um, and we were impressed and then well, I was so happy when, when he committed to the job. Um, it's made a massive difference already. Um, he, just, he just suits the way I want my horses to be ridden. He suits, we get on well as um, from a guy I've hardly known three or four months ago. Mm. We get on really well. I rate him as, he, he's definitely the forgotten jockey, I don't know. Yeah. You, 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 this game is about fashion and he maybe went out of fashion but to me, he's as good as anyone in the country. Yeah. I really think he's underrated. I, I've interviewed him a few times, and uh, I always think in life anyway, but particularly in sport, getting that balance between confidence but feet on the ground is, yeah. is the key. You know, that can border on arrogance in some people, but I think he's got that, that balance just right. No surprise coming from the Moors, I suppose. Yeah, you can... It's noticeable, the Moor training and grounding. Um, he won the Brocklesby for us and came, and not even a smile on his face, just serious job still wasn't done till he was off the horse and off he went briefed the owners and off he went and back at work next week um, like nothing had happened it's brilliant yeah fantastic so everything is is gearing up and pretty much on plan yeah it's been um, look a lot of planning goes on behind the scenes um, there's a lot of work that people don't see and I tried to explain to the lads in the yard when the lasses who work in the yard um, how busy we are behind the scenes because it's not just in the yard. There's so much planning. Um, yeah, there's a, I've got a great team, like I say, Bob Stevens, Jordan Hopkins, my dad, Louis, uh, who does the pedigree and buying the horses. And this, from the pedigree to the form reading to the race planning. And then the, in the yard, I've got um, a head lad, Amadeo, who I got from John Gosden. Um, Becky's the other head lass who I got from William Jarvis, and she's ex Henry Cecil. They run the whole team, and they—I mean, without them, it just yeah. wouldn't be possible. They really make it so that I can just deal with everyone and make it all come together. As ever, so many moving parts and uh, trying to keep all of that going in the right direction. Great to catch up with uh, Dylan. More coming up after this.